Welcome back to our channel. Today we will explain you about defect prevention guidelines. Defect prevention. Defect prevention is a proactive process. The purpose of defect prevention is to do causal analysis to identify the root cause of the defects and prevent them from recurring. Specific actions will then need to be planned and implemented to prevent the occurrence of those types of defects in the future. The defects may have been identified on other projects as well as in early stages or tasks of the current project. Defect prevention activities are also one mechanism for spreading lessons learned across projects. High level defect prevention activities. Defect prevention is a proactive process. The purpose of defect prevention is to do causal analysis to identify the root cause of the defects and prevent them from recurring. Defect prevention workflow. First, it starts with causal analysis, then identify the corrective actions, then estimate the effort and time required for corrective actions, then implement the corrective actions, then verify the effectiveness of corrective actions, check for effectiveness. If the corrective actions are effective, then update the best practices and lessons learned document. If it is not effective, then check for the correct corrective actions required. Procedure for defect prevention activities. Defect prevention activities consist of five steps. Step 1 identify the input, step 2 task, step 3 identify high priority defect prevention areas, step 4 measurements and step 5 output. We will explain all these 5 steps in the following slides. First step identify inputs. We will identify the inputs from the defects logged against the project, lessons learned from earlier phases of the project, lessons learned and other pertinent information from process assets. Step 2 Tasks We need to customize the organization wide defect prevention checklist to suit the project needs for each activity. Review and release the customized checklist to all the stakeholders. Then all the team members should study the defect prevention checklist before the start of any activity. Then carry out causal analysis for the defects logged in the defect logging tool. Then assign the task of implementing and coordinating defect prevention activities to an experienced team member. Then review the status of the preventive actions identified during the project meetings. For every release, study the graph showing defect distribution over causes to verify that the corrective and preventive measures are effective. If not, analyze and correct those measures. Trends and the percentage of defects attributed to a cause must be presented during project management reviews. And finally, if a preventive action identified during causal analysis is outside the scope of the project, then a process improvement suggestion must be posted. Step 3. Identify high priority defect prevention areas. The high priority process elements pertaining to defect prevention will be identified using causal analysis result. Defect prevention checklist will be defined based on major cost categories and resolution methods. Step 4. Measurements 
various measurements as outlined below will form process improvement indicators for the effectiveness of the defect prevention activities. 1. Process and product metric trends and 2. Defect distribution trends based on severity wise classification and the last one is trends of major class categories. Fifth step is output. At the end of the defect prevention cycle, we will collect the defect logs, causal analysis report, revised defect prevention checklist and minutes of project status meetings. Causal analysis. During causal analysis, we will collect the statistics of the nature of the errors or defects that occurred during each testing phase. Causal analysis will be done for every defect reported during testing. In most of the cases, we will perform for severity 1 and 2 defects. Development and testing team will participate in the causal analysis. It has to be a joint activity with the test manager taking the lead in scheduling and managing the activity. Zeroing down the significant causes which need immediate attention can be done using predictive analysis. The quality tools can also be used to minimize the defect density and defect injection rates. A sample template is provided here. The data to be captured during causal analysis activity are defect cause, number of defects, cumulative number of defects, percentage share of this cause and proposed corrective action. Causal analysis report. A detailed causal analysis report should contain Pareto distribution of defects over causes. Pareto principle or 80-20 rule states that 80% of the defects are due to 20% of the causes. It shows that the level of inputs and outputs is not always equal. Bar chart comparing defect injected at various stages in the project. A bar graph can be defined as a graphical representation of data, quantities or numbers using bars or steps. Here bar charts are used to compare and contrast different types of defect data that are injected in different frequencies. Preventive actions identified and classified as management actions and technical actions. By segregating the actions between the two, we can plan for allocation of resources from each department later. Estimated effort for each preventive action. We should provide the estimated report so that all the stakeholders will be aware of the resources required during this activity. Provide the number of action items proposed and completed over the month in the causal analysis report. And the last is provide details on any recommendations to update the standard software process in the organization. Implementation an implementation plan would be prepared to eliminate or reduce the occurrence of defects. A sample template is provided here. The implementation plan should have status, detailed tasks, responsibilities, prerequisites or dependencies, output expected from task, estimated start date, estimated end date, and command scala. Defect prevention methods used by development team while developing a software program. The software industry has put much effort into finding methods for preventing programmers from inadvertently introducing bug while writing software. 
The methods highlighted here are purely for development team to concentrate on reducing defects in any program. We are sharing this info to you to know the details of prevention methods used by development team. Method 1. Programming Style While typos in the program code most likely are caught by the compiler, a bug usually appears when the program makes a logic error. Various innovations in programming style and defensive programming are designed to make these bugs less likely or easily to spot. Method 2. Programming Techniques Bugs often create inconsistencies in the internal data of a running program. Programs can be written to check the consistency of their own internal data while running. If an inconsistency is encountered, the program can immediately halt so that the bug can be located and fixed. Alternatively, the program can simply inform the user, attempt to correct the inconsistency and continue running. Method 3. Development Methodologies There are several processes for managing programmer activity so that fewer bugs are produced. Many of these fall under discipline of software engineering, which addresses software design issues as well. For example, formal program specifications are used to state the exact behavior of the program so that design bugs can be eliminated. Method 4 Programming Language Support Programming languages often include features which help programmers prevent bugs such as restricted namespaces and modular programming among others. For example, when a programmer uses a variable of different types instead of another, the code doesn't type check and fails to compile. In addition, many recently invented languages have deliberately excluded features which can easily lead to bugs. For example, the Java programming language doesn't support pointer arithmetic. And the last method is code analysis. Tools for code analysis help developers by inspecting the program text beyond the compiler's capabilities to spot potential problems. Although, in general, the problem of finding all programming errors in a given specification is not solvable. These tools exploit the fact that human programmers tend to do the same kind of mistakes when writing software. With this, we conclude our today's session on Defect Prevention Guidelines. We will connect again with you very soon. Thank you for watching our channel.